Well, good morning from uh, from the lovely state of Nevada. Yeah, I was just in California a couple of days ago, and um, what I'm doing is I'm basically as I'm working my way south, uh, I am kind of crisscrossing my way back and forth across the Nevada California border, pretty much staying right on the uh, the 395, uh, the right going north to south. And uh, as I go south on that, <coughs> excuse me, I uh, uh, I pull over to uh, to different areas. And um, just look at uh, look at what's going on, uh, things that I've got pinpoint on my map, uh, whether it's a mine, ghost town, uh, some kind of a hiking venture, uh, going to visit a small, uh, funky little town type of thing like Bishop or Lone Pine. Um, we'll be doing all that stuff as we head south. So uh, one video might be Nevada, one might be California, but I am putting these out in chronological order. So. Uh, just try to stick with me on this. Today, which is uh, about the third week of August 2024, I am right now looking at, you know, there's the moon right there. Uh, I am looking at the uh, Sever Sierra Nevada mountain range. And uh, specifically, I am in a place called the Simon, S-I-M-O-N, the Simon Mining District. And this is an area that is basically, if you were to look at a map, it's basically south southeast of the town of hawthorne nevada and uh i don't know supposedly uh i read somewhere or was told or i don't know maybe i just made this up but there's like three thousand mining sites scattered throughout nevada i would absolutely believe that now some of those are substantial uh kind of like the nightingale mine that we did earlier um tunnel camp uh, this one here that we're going to see today is absolutely astounding. and um, But then others are just, you, you get there and it's like just a sealed up shaft and a sign that says historical marker and that's it. So you kind of need to do your due diligence that, uh, when it comes to researching these types of places because the last thing you want to do is put yourself, put your vehicle uh, through a lot of turmoil trying to get to some of these sites. Uh, but then, of course, you're going through the gas, and gas out here on the West Coast is extremely expensive. Uh, you're going through your time, so you really want to be careful as far as what sites you visit, how much time you uh, uh, you spend there, and uh, and kind of just kind of go from there. Now, I do a lot of shooting from the hip, uh, so I'll look at a map and I'll find a, a new mining site that's listed on a map that I've never heard of before. I'll do what I can as far as I'm looking out right now to the east. As the sun comes up here uh, over Simon, but uh, I do as uh, I do as much investigation, uh, information gathering as possible uh, before I hit these mine sites. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll get halfway out somewhere, uh, spend half a day doing it, and uh, realize that yeah, either the trail is closed down uh, or the trail is not something I'm interested in doing because I don't want to put my vehicle through it. Um, or I get to the site and it's just, it's, it's a dud. That happens. Uh, in, in a lot of those cases, I, uh, you know, I just chalk it up to experience and, uh, and move on. But the ones like today that are truly spectacular, I, uh, I spend time at, and, um, I try to give you as much background information as possible, uh, and try to keep the videos as, as, uh, as concise and as, uh, um, I don't want to say short, but I also don't want to say that I, you know, I, I rush through it. So, uh, but I try to keep it concise, uh, highlight certain things, um, and don't talk about other things because it's just it's redundant. So, you know, you, you see a, a knockdown wooden cabin somewhere uh, at one site, and you can expect to see those at other sites. So, what I do is I usually do a quick run through uh, the site once I get here. And uh, I kind of figure out what it is that we want to take a look at, what it is I don't want to waste my time or your time talking about, and go from there. So all of that being said, this is one of those sites that is absolutely amazing, and you see almost everything here. Uh, I just spent about an hour, hour and a half doing a quick walkthrough. I got in here last night uh, after traveling out here. There was another site that I was going to do before this called the Omco. Uh, Omco site. Uh, that was one of those sites that I got about three quarters of the way to, 
And I'm like, something's not feeling right here. Uh, I couldn't find a lot of information about it. And um, so I went ahead and turned it and just, you know, erased it from my list of things to do. And instead came here, which was a site that I was going to do anyway. Uh, it was just going to be later on in the week. Uh, so I got here yesterday, late yesterday, set up shop and I uh, stayed here last night. Uh, as is usual, I am the only one here. And as is usual, I like that that way. I stayed here last night. It was a great night. A little bit of wind, but uh, temperatures did not get down as low as they were when I was at like the uh, Shemung mine, where it got real cold that night. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, we are at the Simon Mining District. And sometimes you'll see it called Simon Wells. Uh, sometimes you'll see it just called the Simon. Um, but this site... And right now I'm showing you what is left of the mill. And we'll talk more about this. This uh, this video is going to be like one of those episodes of Lost, where I show you a bunch of crap, we talk about a bunch of crap, and you're probably going to be left sitting there watching this thing like, what the hell is this kid talking about? But at the end, I promise I'll wrap it all up for you and it all come together. You're going to be like, wow, that's brilliant. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I stayed here last night. I'm going to start walking up this road. Uh, I stayed here. This right now is looking out over the west, by the way, and that is the one way in here. Pretty much, that is the main way. Is you can just barely make out right there. You can just barely make out the uh, the route, the trail. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a road. That's what it is, but it, yeah, it's far from being a road. Um, but that is the way in. So. Uh, Probably one of the coolest features of this site is at the very beginning of the road in. Uh, we are not going to start there. That is where we're going to end. But uh, that is the road in uh, coming from the west to the east. Uh, let's see, this site here. Oh, there's so much going on here. Um, there are two main mines now i say that and please don't be mistaken there are a ton of freaking mine shafts pit mines smaller mines all that good stuff but there are two main mines here uh the big one that's called actually the simon mine and then there's a smaller one which is the one that we are going to see uh at the very end of this video uh that is probably in my mind is probably the neatest one uh it's got a couple of neat features and it's got something that's truly, truly cool that uh, I want to make sure I show you here before we're done. So we, uh, we're walking up this road here. Um, and this kind of just right now walks around the main uh, uh, mining site. So off of this road here, you're going to have the actual Simon mine, which we're going to take a look at here in a second. And then you're going to be able to have access to the mill, a couple of the other smaller buildings, the operational buildings. Um, and then some buildings, I got no idea what the hell they are. But uh, we'll go through them anyway. So you can see my Jeep right here. That's where I stayed last night. Always parked right there. Uh, I've since broken down my camp. And as soon as I'm done shooting the video, we will be wheels up and getting out of here. So just kind of looking around here real quick. Uh, unfortunately, the way I need to pan around, I'm going to flash the sun in your eyes real quick, but just, just stick with me here. So, this right here is was kind of the main, the main area. Uh, you can see there's a lot of space up here for vehicles. The hilltop. And right on the other side of this ridge right here, right to the right side of the road as you're looking at the video at the screen um, is where the mill was at where we just walked right past so that being said uh we're just gonna start just walking through here real quick again this is where i stayed right here uh you can see i had plenty of room easy to level the vehicle uh the only problem i had was a little bit of exposure to the wind because there's nothing here breaking breaking the wind as it howls through here luckily the wind wasn't too bad last night um, there is no internet service up here. Uh, so if you remember when we were talking uh, about what I look for in a campsite or a place to disperse camp, 
it is eh, I try to I try to meet as many as about five or six criteria as possible um, is it remote well in this case it, it absolutely is um, is there some kind of protection from the elements whether it's the sun the wind the rain what have you well in this case there obviously is not uh, but uh, I'm willing to because of the the great area I was willing to uh, go ahead and look past that. Uh, is there internet connection? Uh, no, no, absolutely there is. There's not up here. There's, the internet is nowhere to be found anywhere around here unless you have Starlink, which I do not have. Uh, so, that being said, uh, kind of forgiving those setbacks there as far as what you know, the criteria. Uh, this site right here that I picked out is very, very, very nice. Um, and you can see there's plenty of space up here to where uh, there's evidence that other people have, have camped up here. You can see the fire rings and what have you. But um, I don't know if it's because it was a Thursday or Friday or just because it's so remote. There's nobody else out here. So and I anticipate or suspect that while we do this video, which is getting longer by the second because I keep yammering on about stupid stuff. But anyway, um probability dictates that the longer I do this video the more probable it is that somebody shows up so let's let's move on so I'm just kind of flashing around here at some of the debris and there is a ton of freaking debris uh, scattered around this site for obvious reasons that being which this site is humongous it is spread out like I said there is all kinds of mines mine shafts open pits trenches uh, foundations, buildings, structures, equipment, all kinds of stuff, just all over the place up here. And it would take forever to show all this stuff. So uh, we've all seen buildings that have fallen down. We've all seen buildings that have burned down. Um, fascinating, probably the first, second, maybe third time you saw it. But after that, it's like, dude, seriously, move on from the, the knockdown structures. As I sit here and I film this one right here. Um, a lot of corrugated metal, sheeting, uh, beams, cables, all that type of thing exists up here. Uh, this mine site itself was established, I think it was like 1879, 1880, somewhere in that area. And it did a little bit of work. Uh, it, was, it was operational, but it really didn't meet its heyday until about 40 years later in 1919 when they uh, they started pulling out of the ground here it wasn't necessarily gold uh there may have been some of that around here i don't know i'm not showing that that there was but uh, kind of what this mine was known for was an ore that was silver lined zinc iron as opposed to non-silver lined zinc and iron um, the purpose and the use of that stuff, I have no idea. I mean, I know that, that, uh, when I say iron, I meant to say lead, I'm sorry. Um, I know that each of those, whether it's silver, whether it's zinc, whether it's lead, whatever, uh, I know individually what they're used for, uh, in several use cases. Uh, but what exactly the attraction was for a silver lined I have no idea. I don't know if they pulled that silver out of there or if there was actually a use for that. Kind of like there was a use for uranium at some of those mines. Um, uh, that was pulled from some of the mines in Utah that we talked about earlier. Uh, you're going to see a lot of this stuff here uh, at this site. So, uh, again, a lot of structures that are basically just left alone, left laying there. Uh, but then if you can see, again, where they've got cordoned off open pits or areas that have soft ground where the ground is starting to cave in there is a ton of that stuff around here and very few of the if, if you remember right in um, like a nightingale um, as we investigated some of these open pits like this here you actually had access to uh, the underlying mine here it's mostly just ground that is starting to cave in a little bit where it's soft. So in other words, you don't want to go across that, those barbed wire fences. 
and walk too heavily on that ground that's within the, that uh, fenced-in area because underneath there is an open mind and that ground is about to give out. So uh, in one or two cases that I remember as I did the walk around earlier, uh, there's some big open pits that you do have access to the, to the mines. And I'll show you those as we go on here. But uh, as I was looking in there, I'm like, man, that looks pretty sketchy in there. <laughs> I mean, I've got, I've got a really high tolerance and threshold for, for risk. But um, yeah, I, I looked in there and I'm like, yeah, something on my gut just doesn't feel right about that. So here's, here's like a fire pit that was left by, uh, there's one, two, there's three fire pits here that were left by uh, previous camping out here and uh so we are not moving along too quickly here but anyway uh that's what happens when you're dealing with somebody like me who likes to yammer on about all kinds of stuff so i get distracted and before i know it i'm like stand still filming for 10 minutes uh and this isn't even one of the main sections i wanted to i wanted to show you all so as we uh, just continue walking around up here, I'll just call this the parking lot because that's pretty much, that's pretty much, it, it's, it looks like it was used as a parking area slash staging area for equipment uh, and what have you at one time. So um, again, here's an area here where it uh, looks like it might've been, uh, there, there, I'm sure that there was at one time, this is where the ground is starting to give away. Uh, you can see where the structures have fallen into the trench. And um, so, yeah, you just got to be real careful. This entire area out here is like a big old freaking piece of Swiss cheese. I mean, it is, there is so much underground tunnels and shafts running through this area. It's absolutely insane. Uh, I'm going to try to get past all the knockdown, knockdown buildings. So we've all seen that. I don't know if it's a boiler or what it is this over here let me get out of the damn sun so it seems like that it's like it's like campfire smoke it's like no matter what direction that you move it follows you around same with the sun okay this right here is was, was interesting i'm not really sure obviously it's a, it's a holding tank it's a tank of some sort uh and it almost looks like one of those train cars uh, obviously with no wheels on it in fact It looks like they pulled the wheels off of it. But anyway, that right there, uh, my guess was either used to hold water or some kind of a fuel. So if it's used to hold water, um, it's probably used, because like I said, these mines needed water uh, for operational sake. Now, that doesn't mean that they need to be flooded out like a couple of the mines we've looked at in the past, but you do need water for cooling purposes. Uh, um, as you uh, as you start to drill and also for the equipment uh, and I suppose you probably need water for the miners themselves the, uh, the, the workers that may have been what that uh, what that tank was used for I don't know uh, there are no markings on it they've long since corroded or rusted or rusted away this here is a I don't know it doesn't look a hundred years old uh, but I don't know the history of it uh, I was in it yesterday and I don't know, you can just smell uh, rats. There's a very distinct smell uh, when you walk into a place like I'm in right now and it's infested with rats. And that's what this is. It's kind of like the smell of a, um, not to be a macabre, but uh, of, of a dead body. You know, once you have that smell in your, in your brain, it never goes away. You always smell it. Uh, and you pick up on it quickly whenever there's, it's, it's in the vicinity. But that's kind of like this here. These rats are all over the place in here. They're using the insulation here, you see on the ground, for insulation, for, for themselves, for their nests and what have you. So you walk in there and you smell that crap, and it's, that's what it is. It's rat crap. You can see the droppings everywhere. Well, I don't know what this building was used for. Obviously, it had electricity. You can see the light up there. Uh, so this may have been put in. Well, it's, it's not modern. It's not like it was built five years ago. No way. It's older than that. Um, but like I said, this, this mine was operational. 
I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted. Um, they started they started working out of here back in 1879, if I remember right. Uh, but it really came to its glory about 40 years later when the production and the extraction of that silver lined um, lead and zinc start being pulled out of here. And uh, that's kind of what really got this thing up and going. And it was around for probably about 20, 25 years uh, in operation. Closed down, and it would reopen for a little while, and then closed down again. And I think it finally ceased operations back in like the 1950s. And that might have been about when that building was built. So it's a fairly newer structure. Uh, okay, moving along. Now, this over here is where the actual Simon mine is at. When I say Simon, sorry, it's a little chilly out here. My mouth isn't moving real good. S-I-M-O-N. Simon Mining District, Simon Wells. Uh, this right here is where the actual mine was at. And when I start seeing stuff like this where it's got... Hey, look at me, fencing, that attracts me. But we'll get over there here in a second, and I'll tell you why, it's really cool. Uh, this building is very interesting, especially what's inside of it. So you're gonna see uh, a couple of rails up here, a set of tracks. Uh, so obviously things are being brought in here on, on uh, ore carts. Uh, things are probably leaving here the same way being loaded up on the trucks and being transported out of the area. Um, walking around here. And actually, as you walk around, and I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll try to film it uh, as, we, uh, as we carry on, but uh, there are some things around here that are cool that were used by the miners. Glass bottles, uh, pieces of clay, uh, clay plating, what have you, that are still laying around. And um, as I find it, I will film that. So, but anyway, uh, coming around over here, of course, you have to have your 55 gallon drum, all your wooden timber beams. But here is the, the building from the side. And this building uh, housed, you're going to see it here in a second, but if you remember, like what the old printers, I think the printers boxes uh, that. Uh, you kept like the different stamps and the uh, the different uh, um, items that were used to print the old newspapers and pamphlets and what have you, uh, the old type stuff and what have you. Uh, that's kind of like what's going on here. There's a series of shelving and drawers in here that have what I think are samples that have been pulled out of the area. And I don't know if they're being tested to see what the mineral content is inside to see if it's, well, here you go. You make up your own mind. This is what I'm talking about. So you'll see these boxes, they're, they're actually drawers is what they are. And they have stuff like this. This is a piece of concrete right here. I should say a piece of rock is what it is. And this right here was obviously extracted out of the side of these mountains. And you can see where it consists of different, it's made up of different things. And these boxes are labeled in ways that I could not decode. Um, so there's a series of numbers. Uh, part of that is probably as far as where, the, where they were placed on the shelves. So almost like the old... Uh, what the hell was that card catalog is that what they were back in elementary school the libraries i think that's what they were where you know everything was labeled differently uh, and somehow you found out a way of finding whatever it was that you were looking to read so but all of these boxes have individual different numbers on them and they were all organized in whichever way that they that they organized this stuff in this tin shack this metal shack is filled with these boxes. These boxes are pretty cool. These boxes are pretty damn cool, actually. Um, they have since obviously fallen over. I don't know if that's due to a people problem 
coming in here and destroying a place or if that's due to just nature kind of just doing its thing. So here you go. Here's more over here. And if I were to wager a guess, I would, they probably pulled this stuff out of a certain location, tested it, and if it came up positive for whatever it was that they were looking for, I guess the silver lined lead and, uh, and zinc, then they continued drilling in that area. If not, then they uh, didn't waste their time there. But each one of these boxes has a different numbering system on it. It means nothing to me, but I guarantee you that whoever worked in this building knew exactly where certain samples were at on what shelf and what drawer, and they definitely knew what uh, each one of these meant. And of all the mines I've been in, this is the first time I've actually seen something like this. This was cool. So that's what was in this building here. Now, coming out here, there's more of the same. Uh, obviously some kind of furnace or burning thing. There's a chimney here, a chute, and uh, I don't know what how this worked here, but uh, they were burning something in here, uh, extracting something or whatever it was, so here you go. Okay, now this right here, and see, here we go, here's more. So just like I said, everywhere you look, there's these dr drawers with these different samples. Now this one here has like Samples that are, look like that, put in that drawer there. I wish that there was a drawer that said pure gold. That'd be kind of cool, huh? But on the other hand, it probably wouldn't still be here if that was the case. So, this building was filled with that stuff. Now, coming over here, this is the actual, and you can see the tracks as they continue all the way through here. And they go up to this big hole right here. So, what's going on over here? This right here is the actual Simon Mine. And you gotta be real careful out here because it gets pretty sketchy quickly. So you start seeing stuff like this here. Danger, stop, concrete is undercut. All right, that's, that's a good warning. Uh, we are within the confines of that orange barricaded area. So here's the Simon mine right here. This was a, uh, a three compartment mine. It's kind of hard to tell right now because it's all broken apart, but you can see one, two, three. And it used to go all the way down just like that, three compartment. This mine right here, and I mean, I gotta be real careful around here uh, because if I go in there, I ain't coming back out ever. Um, Obviously, you can see we're starting to cave in. What well, has caved in? Uh, the concrete collar that surrounds it is still somewhat intact. You see that, even though that's starting to break away now. The tracks running up to where they would have met up with the uh, the carts that that were coming out, and then they, they would wheel it in there. I don't know, probably sand, take a look at the samples, and then go from there. But you can here you can see where the concrete is undercut right here. You can see where. You don't want to step too much on that area right there because it is starting to really, really give way. Uh, but this is the actual Simon mine. And this is one of the two major mines here. Uh, we'll visit the other one here at the very last of the video. This mine here reportedly drops for a thousand feet. Um, I was out here this morning with when it was dark with my headlamp shining it down here. and I could not see the bottom. And if you throw a rock down there, and I do not want to drop my phone. I mean, it takes forever for the, for the report to come back on that as far as when it hits the ground. So supposedly that drops about a thousand feet straight down. Um, in the Simon Mine, <sighs> Uh, again, the reports that I've read are that there are 25,000 feet 
So we'll call it four, four and a half miles. 25,000 feet of underground tunneling that come just from this main shaft right here. So when they talk about, be careful walking around these old mines, because you don't want to walk into something like this. Um, yeah, you don't want to walk into something like this because you're not coming back out of there. Your body's going to be extracted out by recovery teams. So again, there's a last look down. I'm not going to push my luck here anymore. But that's the last look down at the Simon Mine. And for perspective, this thing is probably, this edge right here is probably six feet. And this edge here, my guess is 15, 15 or 20 feet. So you can see, you can tell how big that opening is right there. And of course, there would have been a series of conveyors, there would have been a series of, of lines, uh, tracks that were running up and down this thing, to getting guys out of there, getting ore out of there, getting debris out of there. And a lot of this, the tailings that you see, uh, the tailings are the rock debris that's pulled out of the mines. Um, well, they got to do something with it as they work their way, you know, make the mines bigger by dynamite or picking away at it with their, with their equipment. You got to get rid of that debris somehow when they throw it on a cart and bring it to the top. And then they just basically just stick it in a big pile. Piles, I should say, because there's piles everywhere around here of rock debris. And there's a big pile right there of mine tailings. So whenever you see those, whenever you see those uh, mounds of debris that, that you can tell that are not naturally supposed to be there, um, kind of, kind of let that give you a heads up that there's probably a mine somewhere in the area. Okay, so this area right here, really cool, a lot going on here. There's the, the actual Simon Mine. It's got the building. I don't know what the building's called, but that's that's where all those samples were at. Uh, the, and then as we come around here, we will actually be climbing up on this ridge right here because we are going to climb up there and come down on the top of that mill. And the mill was the first thing that was that was that was videoing uh, when we turned this thing on this morning. I gotta figure out how the hell they get up there. So as I work my way through the uh, through the scrub brush here, this stuff sucks because it gets in your shoes and socks and everything else. <laughs> Uh, we come across all kinds of metal debris, rock debris. Uh, all this stuff adds a certain level of character to this site. Uh, like I said, every mine site has this type of thing. It's almost like when the mine closed down, these guys said, okay, punched out and left, never came back. And here's all their stuff. Some people would probably say, well, that's terrible that they left all this stuff out there. Actually, I don't think so at all. I think the history of this is absolutely fascinating. Uh, this is when people actually worked for a living. Uh, they, worked, they pretty much worked hard and they played hard because most of these types of places had several saloons, several bars, brothels, all that stuff. So when these miners got done, they definitely put in a hard day's work and they partied hard that night. So a lot of these sites like this here and i don't know how much of a town was actually here this is the site uh there may have been a couple of saloons here i don't know uh, chances are that was located somewhere else down the road somewhere but uh those guys uh those guys would party hard and that's why a lot of the ghost towns a lot of the old mining sites what have you were kind of lawless areas where murder was high, crime was high, uh, but it was what it was. So, all right, working our way up, up this area here. Like I said, we're gonna be coming down on top of that mill, if I can get up here. Uh, we're gonna be coming down on top of that mill that we started the video off with. Whew. We're at between 6,500 and 7,000 feet. 
is uh, it's kind of like the last thing I saw. All right, here, that road down there that you see, that was the main road in I was talking about. That's where we started the video off at. And here is a bird's eye view pretty much of the mill. What's left of it anyway, the foundation. People often wonder that, well, whenever I go into a mine site and I see, quote unquote, the mill, why is there not something more substantial there? Well, part of the, the thing is, is fires consume these areas a lot. Uh, whether that's when this was still operational or since it's closed down. Fires are a natural, just a, a reoccurring thing. And obviously, anything that's wooden uh, is set to be disintegrated, basically, consumed by the fire. And what's not wood is pretty much left left behind. Well, a lot of the mills were made out of timber. Uh, the foundation obviously was concrete, so that's why you have that left. But whatever structure that was built from there on top of that, the wooden timber structure is uh, long since gone. So that's one reason why. So, uh, the, in the fires, another reason why a lot of these mine sites were forced to close down was they could only rebuild them so many times. Uh, before they're like, well, you know what? That's not going to work out again, so we're not going to redo it again. This is that building that, that was up here on top of this hill. I mean, you can look down. There's where I stayed last night. Right there, there's that big tank. There's a building where the Simon mine was at with the, uh, it had all the, uh, the drawers of samples. And this building up here is just kind of up here on top of the hill by itself. And the only thing, we'll go in there here in a second, but the only thing I can guess because of the way it was constructed with all the cabling and wiring that was that's coming out of this is that it was used for some kind of electronics, uh, maybe a communication point. You can see a lot of a lot of wires still laying around. And as we go in here, it's like four separate little rooms in here. That is not a shower, believe me. Uh, so four separate little rooms in here want to call it a room and just kind of a really weird building so that's 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 all there is to it that's it you look around back up on top is like an old-fashioned telephone pole with those uh with the um, steel spikes coming out of the side they used to climb that you used for uh, foot placement and hand placement as you climbed up it there are a series of telephone poles around here uh, up here, I'm not going to go up there, but that's basically the highest point. My guess is that that's probably a gravity-fed uh, water tank up there. Um, without going up there, I'm just going to wager a guess that that's what that is. Yeah, just as we kind of flash around here, you can just see what's left of this... Uh, this compound in a series of uh, series of buildings and, and structures. So, but no, uh, I do not think that this is um, litter. Uh, I think that this is history up here, and I freaking love it. So I'm glad that some agency or some organization does not come up here to clean this thing up. I'm glad that they leave it alone. And they'll let guys like me come up here and look and look around. Uh, 
because I think that this type of thing is absolutely fascinating. So you see these rock piles like right here? This is all stuff that they've pulled out of the ground. And they basically just deposit it right here. Like the, so the, the tailings have come, uh, the rock debris, as they, uh, as they extract it out of the ground. Now it's gotta go somewhere. And uh, it's usually put in nice, neat little piles, uh, like you see here. basically like a uh, uh, like a bin like a loader a chute uh, it's actually a well-preserved one too uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go down there here in a second so we'll finish up top up here as we just uh, and you're gonna see a lot of this stuff old cans like that that is not something that was put there five years ago uh, a lot of that stuff is original uh, from the guys that lived here worked here what have you and uh usually you'll see like uh, an area where you'll come on a, you'll come up a, a, like on a little pit area and all you see in there is like a bunch of rusted out cans containers it was almost like their central dump area is what that was um and i'm trying to think i think i do remember seeing one here and if i remember where it was at well i'll show it to you here is the side that loader you can see that the uh, the tram the tracks that came in on top dump stuff down into the chute and or into the uh, into the uh, the holder compartment and then it went down the chute here and it was further loaded into vehicles trucks to be uh, transported out of here so I'll get a, uh, a view from the front here as we walk around that way uh, but that one actually there is actually fairly well preserved. Man, I tell you what, we're 45 minutes into this thing and we're just getting started. So this video is liable to be, well, I don't know. I don't want to run out of the battery. Um, here's a pit here that has been cordoned off. And I'm going to jump this gate. I'm going to jump this real quick. So you can see down here that this right here is where the ground just gave way. And there was a shaft, an open mine shaft underneath there. Uh, the ground on top said, nope, I'm done and, uh, and caved in. So you see a bunch of the old, like, like here's, a, here's tracks right here. It's kind of hanging out there. Those were ones on the top side, old water and air pipes. Um, but yeah, this is where you gotta be real careful because um, an open pit like that could make for a bad day if you fall in there. But this is where the ground just it just gave out, and there's so much of this type of thing around here. Um, some of that you will give out in a way to where you actually have access to the shafts underneath. That one does not offer that uh, capability. Believe me, I'll look. Okay, coming back over here real quick, and then we'll wrap it up up here. So just some more structures that, uh, I don't know what they're for, but they fell down, knocked down, blew down, whatever. And coming around the, uh, the eastern side now, on the eastern side of where that mill was at, this here, it's just another weird building that I have no idea what the purpose was, but it's just sitting up there by itself. And uh, I walked in there. It's just a, it's just a, a one-room shack is all that it is. So there's no reason to go back up there. It's just another building with a series of, I don't know, it's a structure. It's almost like, I don't know, I don't know what it was. Okay, so here's here's like an, uh, like an old telephone pole here. And you'll see these... Uh, in various places out here just on the sides of the roads and what have you so some are still standing like that one some not so much 
All right, working our way through here. Uh, like I was saying earlier, everywhere that you look, there are open shafts. Um, some are sealed off. Some you can go in for 10 or 15 feet and they rock slide or cave in, partial cave in, uh, complicates going further. This area over here, and again, I'm gonna have to flash into the sun because of where I'm at, but this area right here, this little mountainside right here, is littered with open shafts and open pits, enclosed pits and soon to be open pits. Uh, is there anything that we're gonna go in over here? No, uh, I've already looked around. Uh, there's one really cool, and we're gonna get up to here in a second. There's one really cool area uh, where they have a shaft that goes straight down. Um, not as big as the Simon mine, but this is more of a smaller uh, secondary shaft it goes straight down uh it's got a series of it's a wooden ladder series of wooden ladders that go down uh yeah that ladder there is probably a hundred and some odd years old made out of wood yeah i'm not gonna try that one out so working our way around here uh as you continue up this road here there's nothing up there i was up there yesterday it just goes up and wraps around the back side of, um, of this area here. So as we work our way up, this little mountain, like I said, this mountain is, um, there's, open, there's open mines all over the place up here. We're gonna hop up here first. This was the cool, this is the cooler area. And up here you see a number of barricaded off areas or barbed off, barbed wired areas like this here. Uh, some of these are pretty pretty extraordinary. We will, here's one here that's starting to cave in. That is not fenced off. So here's one here that's fenced off. That is pretty damn big. This one up here, I couldn't get close enough to see how far down it goes. So, if I had a selfie stick, I could point it over there and see. I don't know, maybe you can see, I can't. I can't see from where I'm standing. But that one there is an open pit that can make for a bad day if you fall into that thing. And then right next to it is his bigger brother. There's a wooden ladder there that goes down where they were digging. This is where the, the ground is basically just given way. So what, this was once covered with ground and this is all, everything that was underneath there. And the ground just caved in. So uh, that's open right there. So. You wanted to climb down this rickety ass old wooden ladder and go down in there. Uh, I imagine that it is pretty extensive as far as how far in there you could go. Uh, it's not something we're gonna be doing today. Uh, if I had a better option as far as, cause if that ladder breaks, I'm not getting back out of there. That's the problem. If it was a normal ladder, I'd be down there all day long. Uh, but that's, that's, that's what we're dealing with here is that I, I don't have access, good enough access one thing is to get down, is to get down there. Hell, I could jump down there and jump about 10, 15 feet, land and be okay. The bigger problem is getting back out if something if something, something breaks, like that ladder breaks, is getting back out of there. So um, that's where you just kind of say, 
Yeah. The uh, the risk is too high. It's too high. The risk is way more than the reward. And uh, so we're going to move on. Um, there's another site like that right over here. And I'm not going to go to every one of these barricaded sites, but I just want to show you how big some of these pits is a foundation for a building right there. I don't know if it was a secondary mill or, or what it was, but uh, and you can see where the ground basically just said, ah, screw you, and uh, caved in and took everything that was on top with it. So at one point, these guys were digging underneath here. Uh, today, the ground has caved in and said, uh, see ya, and uh, has checked out. Okay, but there is something else. You, start, you see a bunch of signs like this, dangerous, unsafe mine, stay out. Um, here's another, another area that they've got fenced off. That is caving in, open shaft right there. It's caving in, taking all the uh, taking all the piping with it. There used to be a set of tracks that extended out to the road. Again, taking debris. There's a building right there that we just walked around that we did not go in. All right, real quick, uh, I want to take you up here. I wanted to keep this to one video, but the very last part that I wanted to show you is a little bit of a hike down the road. And to conserve battery, I might stop this as I walk, make that walk and then pick up again uh, once we get to that actual site. Um, I'm going to think about that some more and figure out what I'm going to do. As I, uh, That's not this spot here. Uh, it's, it's coming up, though. So, as I work my way up this mountain, again, underneath me right now is going to be all kinds of open shafts. Uh, the mines are everywhere here. Well, I just happened to come up here to this morning. Man, I'm about ready to puke. That was a good breakfast, though. I had eggs for breakfast, which is... The same thing I've had for breakf breakfast the last 100 days since I left Florida. So, as I say, eggs are one of the most nutritious things that you can eat. Uh, it's also one of the easiest things to make, prepare. And probably one that, well, I don't know, this is Nevada, where they have cage-free eggs is all you can buy. So, you go into Walmart and Target and what have you, and you can't buy, like, just the regular old styrofoam green eggs. You have to buy cage-free eggs, which are like a buck and a half more for an 18-pack than normal. Some law they passed here. So I'm spent eating expensive eggs. So even if I break one outside the frying pan, I'm scooping as much of that up as possible and cooking that thing. So... All right, we'll get there eventually. But you see roads like this were made for reasons. And uh, so whenever I see a, a trail, a path, a track like this, I know that it served a purpose during the operations of this mine. Here's another, here's another open pit here. Right here, you can see where the ground is caved in. The old timber, wooden beams. That does not go anywhere, I already checked. But give it another five years and it'll probably go somewhere. So this ground is always settling due to natural occurrences like weather, earthquakes, things like that. So. 
imagine you're always gonna find a pit somewhere out here that's not been recognized by the uh, park service yet. Okay. This is one of the cool areas I wanted to show you right here. Was this open pit. We're gonna attack this from a couple different angles. This little shack right here is what I was telling you about. There's actually within that shack, there's a shaft that goes straight down. I have no idea how far down it goes. First of all, though, I've already been in there. Uh, it probably goes for a while, but the restriction for the squeeze to get through there is only about 12 by 12. And though I could easily contort myself because I'm a small guy to get in there, I've been in several. Hang on a second. This is what we're looking at right here. You can see the wooden ladder in there. That takes you straight down the shaft and i will show you as much of that as i possibly can sorry about the you know, the, the, the camera work i'm doing my best to squeeze through this uh highly secure area here sarcasm included okay so as we come up to this here you can see the wind ladder from top all the way down down there. How far down does it go? Your guess is as good as mine. Let me pull my light out here real quick. And my lights that I have right now are not nearly as good as the lights I was using for cave diving. For cave diving, they were freaking awesome lights. Uh, and I'm setting it up right now. Okay, here we go. So, as I put my camera down that way, I don't know if the light does anything for you or not, but you can see that that goes for a ways. And you can see the ladder that uh, if you wanted to jump on that uh, and take it down, I would definitely stay on the as you're heading down, I'd definitely stay on the right side in case one of these uh, spans gave way. Uh, you would actually hit that first area down there, which might not be fatal. If you went all the way down, that's more than likely to be fatal. So here you go. Here is an open mine shaft uh, with a ladder going down. These guys climb that several times a day every day absolutely fascinating and you can see the the rock the boulders that they had to drill into to make this happen some of the the timber the wooden structures that they use to brace things stability and how far down that goes i don't know it's damn cool though it's damn cool okay uh let me get back out of this gate. So anyway, on top of this mountain here, I gotta make sure I don't get my boys caught in this barbed wire. If so, you're gonna hear an awful noise. Okay, got that. Okay, uh, this mountain here, I've climbed it. Uh, it is, it, there's these open pits, open mines everywhere up here. Uh, so, yeah, if anyone wanted to go down an open mine shaft, this one right here, it's fair game. It's not safe, it's not safe to do. Uh, there's signs posted saying, stay the hell out of here. But that's on you. So, okay, I'm going to walk down this real quick. Uh... I'm not going to show you every open pit 
because like I said, a lot of these pits uh, are not all the way down. They, have, they haven't collapsed all the way into the into the mine yet, but they are just ground that's given away that they've got marked off. So let's start our slow our slow walk to the very last thing I wanted to show you. Starting to warm up nicely out here now. So again, we are looking to the west right now. Actually, there's two more things I wanted to show you real quick. Damn it. After this here, there are... I'll eventually wind up in Bishop, to California. Uh, Bishop is kind of one of those eclectic, funky little towns. I've never been there before. I've got friends that are from there. And they themselves are quite eclectic. Like you can talk about like, pierced noses and tattoos all over the arms and head and pink hair and mohawks uh but really cool people i'm not here to judge uh, i just report back what i see and um but they say that bishop is uh is like that uh lone pine i have been to lone pine i'll be hitting that later not today but later on a couple of weeks probably a week or two uh lone pine is is very cool also uh very um granola-ish again i'm not here to judge i'm just here to report um california is california man i tell you it's expensive so uh gas in california was six the hell was it in bridgeport it was like i don't know 650 a gallon and uh i got just what i needed just so i didn't run out of gas somewhere in the middle of nowhere and uh, I'm like, I'm gonna get back over to Nevada and buy gas over there because like when I got to Hawthorne, it was uh, about a buck 30 a gallon cheaper for the same blend of gas. I don't know, I guess California's all kinds of different blends, but I'm talking about the I don't know, 87 octane or whatever the hell it was. Uh, so I will try to refuel as much as possible in the state of Nevada. Um, that's one reason why I'm not going to be making real big incursions into California. It's just so freaking expensive. I mean, it's just so freaking expensive there. Whether you're talking about the cost of groceries, fuel, uh, whatever. So uh, I'm not interested in paying more than I have to for, for gas, um, eggs, groceries, essentials, what have you. Um, so that's why when I say I'm going to be going down to 395, which is in California, but it basically hugs, for the most part, it hugs the Nevada-California border. It's on the California side, but it is what it is. It's beautiful. Uh, so I will be going, I will be using that to uh, travel further south. But if I can dip off to the east of that and get gas, groceries, whatever, in the state of Nevada, I will. Uh, if I've got something going on to the west of 395, um, like in Death Valley or what is Death Valley West? Anyway, it's, it's right off 395. Uh, Joshua Tree, that, that's all in California. Uh, I will, but man, I tell you what, I will make sure that I'm fully stocked and supplied with the essentials uh, by paying for it in Nevada. And even as you get closer to Arizona, it's even less expensive in some cases in Nevada to uh and arizona does not have this weird egg policy where retail stores have to sell cage-free eggs you can buy the ghetto eggs and you know the kind that you're not sure what the hell they came out of whether it was a chicken or some other kind of weird animal but they're in a green styrofoam case at uh at walmart and uh by the time you get done cooking it and throwing your meat in there and the meat that i use is like the canned meat like spam even though it's it's a corned beef, uh, this right here is that structure that we saw from the top, the the, the, the former rail that used to uh, have uh, probably had tracks on it. It came out here to the road area, and loaded up cars and what have you, or trucks. Um, damn it, I walked right past it. There is a. Uh, 
where was it? I hate to keep flashing into the sun. There is a, uh, an, an open adit up here. Again, an adit is a horizontal line shaft entryway that goes into the, uh, the ground, gives you access to the inner workings of the mines. Um, there is an open one up here. And you can kind of see right there. I was over here earlier looking around and I don't have access, very good access to this. And I'm gonna show you why here in a second. Can you get your obligatory danger stay out signs? And then you've got a fence that you can just walk right around. In here, you can see the original door that was used to keep the mine closed off. You the original latch right there. But here's here's the actual shaft as it goes in. Could I squeeze in there? Uh, yeah, I probably could. How far in there does it go? I have no idea. Uh, don't ask me questions like that because I don't know. So let me see if my light shines anything. Shines anything on this here. Yeah, this light is not going to do what we need it to do. But you can see in there a little bit. Uh, you can see the old keep out sign. Uh, you can see where it's caved in even more. Um, the rock slide. Uh, the longer I stand here, the more likely I am to, to go in there. Um, but honestly, there is something else even neater I want to show you guys. And yeah, for now, I'm going to turn that one down. Um, I don't have any bad feelings about it. I don't have any weird gut feelings about it. I just have a, I want to show you something else beforehand. So I might come back to that. I might not. I don't know yet. Those types of things are required decision-making that my mind right now is not, uh, is not capable of performing. And then over here, you can just kind of see more of the, uh, the structures that were used to, this is that same, wooden frame or wooden um, support uh, that was used for rails to uh, get debris off this mountain as they pumped it out of the, uh, or as they uh, pulled, ex extracted it out of the, uh, out of the mountain. All right, cool. A uh, couple more things. First thing is to get the hell out of here, out of, out of the, off this certain section of the uh, of the site. So where are where are all the cabins at? Where you know where did the miners stay? Uh, where was all that? We kind of saw where the mill was at up there. That would kind of be your in the military we call it a TAC, a tactical operation center. Uh, up there is probably where all that was at. You saw your communications and equipment or electronical electrics building. Uh, you saw your your water tanks. Uh, you saw your your mill, the former mill, before it freaking burned down, which uh, was pretty substantial when it was still around. Um, I imagine they had an office up there somewhere, and it very well could have been that metal building. That could have been the office, uh, or they could be long gone due to fire, flooding, avalanche, whatever. Uh, so that area up there is where all of that type of thing happened. Uh, if there were, there were well, the, the wooden structures, like some of them that you see in front of us right here, could have very well been miners' quarters. Uh, where the miners that were working here uh, might have bedded down for a little while. Uh, I don't know if they had family staying up here or not. Again, I don't know how much of a ghost town, I don't know how much of a town there actually was up here. I don't know if there's hotels and brothels and saloons. I don't know that. To me, that's what a ghost town is. Is you've got your mine, which is your mine site. Uh, that's usually off premises somewhere. 
uh, and then you've got your town that supported that mine. That's usually what is called the ghost town. Uh, that's where the bank was at, the schools were at, uh, any kind of commerce, like maybe there was like a, uh, uh, therefore a grocery store or something like that there, a church, um, uh, residential, you know, housing, that type of thing. That's usually like in the ghost town and the actual mining site uh, that that town supports uh, is usually off premises somewhere. Sometimes they're combined, but in a lot of cases they're not. And I don't know if they were combined here or not. So like you're, you're gonna see a lot of this stuff here, old wooden frames. As you go up this road, that's pretty much all that you see is cabins and structures that have fallen down, burned down. This one right here, that uh, that was not me, I promise. Uh, there is cattle that roam around out here. And judging from the looks of it, they eat well. But anyway, uh, this one right here is probably the best preserved wooden structure that there is out here. And there ain't much left. I mean, it's just falling down due to the wind and just uh, just natural weathering and natural elements. So I'm not gonna walk too much further up this road. I've been up there, I drove up it last night. And uh, each side of the road is, uh, I don't wanna say covered, but there's numerous buildings like this one right here. That uh, we're one standing obviously that I uh, have since. Uh, caved in or burned down. But there was something else up here that I thought was kind of cool. I think it was up here. Like I said, this freaking site is just humongous. Mm -hmm. Call me a liar. Because I don't want to walk too much further up here. Uh, this road continues on further than what I wanted to drive it yesterday. So I turned around basically at the top of this hill. But uh, there was, again, this could have been one of those things that I, that I dreamt. Let's just walk right past this little, this little area up here. This is not, uh, Uh, I think I see it. There's another wooden structure right there that has fallen, been demolished. I think it's right here. I think that's the one. That's all the further we're going regardless. So as I was saying, uh, not always with a mining site do you find a ghost town like right, right with it. Uh, it's usually, I don't say usually, but sometimes it's a mile or two away from the actual mining operations. Again, another cabin that is dilapidated. You see all kinds of stuff like this up here on this road. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't what I'm looking for. But this particular road right here has a number of these structures. So I don't know, like I said, if these were residential or just places to bed down for the night for the miners. Uh, or if there was a church and a school and all that good stuff up here. I don't know. I don't think I saw this yesterday. See what this is all about. This looks interesting. Here's an old can right there. Well, that's what I wanted to show you. What well, here it is. Remember how I told you that a lot of times there was like a central area where they threw all their garbage, all their tin cans and metal cans and stuff. Here's one such site right here. This is actually a smaller site, but they actually the old miners would just dispose of this stuff in just a central site like that right there. So all these here were old soup cans, sardine cans, uh, whatever they, whatever came in a can, they popped it open and ate and 
toss it in the central area and there you go. I don't know what the hell this is. It's like an old chicken coop. No idea. Okay, but anyway, let's, let's move on. So, damn, that's really disappointing. I wanted to show you something else I forgot. I forgot where it was at. And uh, I don't have the patience or the, uh, the battery life of my camera to pursue it anymore. So anyway, it was no big deal. Basically, it was just a cool little tiny, it was almost the size of, a, uh, of an outhouse that housed, I don't know if it was where they stored their explosives or what, but it was just, uh, it's basically about a, a five by 10 room that had a number of shelves on it. And uh, that's it. It was just, it was just a cool, real cool little funky little shack is what it was. And uh, I made note to, to show that in this video. And I guess I should have made more than a mental note to make that happen. Okay, uh, anyway, as we travel down the same road here, uh, that had all has all these collapsed structures on it. We are right now in route to. Remember how I said that the Simon the Simon Mining District had two main mines. We saw the first one. That was the main main mine. That was the Simon mine. That was the one that uh, we looked down. Uh, it was it was contained within that corrugated metal um, structure, and we looked down, and I said that it goes for about a thousand feet. And uh, that's the, that, that was the main mine. The second mine, the second main mine, obviously I've shown you other mines in this area that are, I guess you can call them secondary. Uh, anyway, the second main mine that was uh, pumping out the good stuff from this area is basically the first thing that you see when you enter uh, Simon when you enter this uh, this mining site and it has a fantastic what they call a head frame now a head frame is basically a wooden um, frame that stands above well this is one case of a head frame it's a, it's a wooden frame that is you know usually three or four stories tall maybe taller uh, that is set above an open mine shaft that goes vertically below it and that is used to, uh, it's got the equipment that's used to pull up uh, the various carts, cars, uh, bins, what have you, from the mines below. So uh, think of a head frame. It almost resembles like one of the traditional looking oil wells. I'm not talking about the ones that pump oil, you know, it has, a, has, has the rocker arm that goes back. And I'm not talking about that. One. I'm talking about the ones that you see like, traditional ones that when oil comes gushing out it comes gushing out over this entire big well that's kind of what the head frame looks like in a lot of these cases oh i know i want to show you i want to show you something else up here uh this right here somebody kind of collected some pieces that are i guess because they're native to, native to this time this is not a shaft i don't think no it might have been at one point, but it isn't. It's filled in now. But this was like an old stove right here. And on top of that, somebody found a glass bowl. And they put in like an old rusty nail, which you see a lot of that out here. You got to be careful where you drop it. But a lot of like original glass pieces. Uh, some of these sites you can come in and they've actually got the bottles. You can find glass bottles that were around. Uh, but somebody collected it and put it there. That was pretty cool. Uh, here's one of those corned off pits. You can see the uh, barbed wire fence go around it. But you look down and it's just a pit right now. And that is an area right there that is very suspect that they fenced off and said, hey, do not walk here because this is about ready to cave in. And when that caves in, you could go for a while as I've already shown you. Here's the back side of that stove. I thought this is pretty cool. Okay, but anyway, what the hell are we talking about? Oh, the uh, the head frame. Uh, the head frames, for some reason, a lot of these mines are no longer around. Uh, again, it's a wooden structure. Maybe it burned down, maybe it was torn down, fell down. Termites got to it. I have no idea what the hell's going on. 
But this head frame, not that, that's not a head frame. That's another pit right there that is not going anywhere. It's, I've already looked at it. Uh, just a piece of ground that's depressed. It's, it's gonna go somewhere eventually. Uh, there's another wooden structure right there that, again, has seen better days. Uh, so basically what you had is you had on this side, here's the road that brings us into this area. On this side here, you had the operations part of it, the main operations. You had the uh, where the office was at, the mill was at, uh, probably the press. Uh, you got that little building right there with the, the communications and electri electrics were contained over here. And it's almost like on this side of the road is where you had the supporting functions, whether that was residential, uh, a little store. You know, I don't know, but uh, all these wooden buildings are on this side of the road, and then this is on this side of the road. So you do with that with your, what you want. Uh, you can look it up and uh, have a better idea of what that is. Uh, but we are right now coming back around the front side. There's where I said that, that really cool, well-preserved loader was at right there. And we're going to be coming up on that here in a second. Bear with me. I'm going to try to get through this without turning the camera off. But we are in for a little bit of a walk. So uh, now would be a good time to go to the bathroom, uh, go get something to eat, perhaps watch an episode of your favorite series because uh, you could probably fit that into this by the time we get down there um, or just listen to me yammer away at whatever is in my mind which could be uh, a little frightening to tell you the truth uh, again we are looking to the west at the Sierra Nevada mountain range as we uh, continue down this this road uh, I will be taking this road back out of here like i said there's one main way in there's probably something in the back back there that you can punch yourself out and come out in some obscure place somewhere by going through the trees and the weeds and the bushes and all that crap that's out there uh, i've got no interest in that uh, i take the path of least resistance if possible uh, just because i want to preserve my own sanity and the integrity of my jeep all right here's that here's that uh i, I haven't seen one this this well preserved uh, here's that loader right here. So basically you loaded the debris up top. You can see the track That brings the debris on a cart or in a cart dumps it into the big bin right there And then here's the chute that comes down and there would have been a vehicle of some sort down here a truck tractor trailer whatever the hell it was that was used to be on the receiving end of this chute and they'd load up this vehicle and out it would go to remove this stuff out of here. Uh, sometimes they took stuff uh, to be further processed at a mill, uh, another mill somewhere else located off premises somewhere. Uh, a lot of these old mining districts did not have uh, an on-site press where you take the, you take the rocks and uh, you smash them and uh, you get, you extract whatever minerals it is that you're looking for. And uh, so a lot of them had to take whatever they pulled out of these mines. Uh, they weren't able to process it on site. They had to go to a centralized mill somewhere. And maybe several of these mining sites would use, would utilize the same processing facility or mill or press and uh, to extract the minerals, the good, so to speak, out of the rock. Uh, that was one way to do it, uh, but a lot of the, a lot of these mine sites had on-premises mills of some sort, and that's it right there. Again, we we saw that earlier. That's this is where we started the video. Stand on that road right there. We came in. I showed you at the top of it. We looked down. We had the bird's eye view. There was that weird building. Let me get my finger the hell out of the way. There was that weird building right there that was all concrete that we walked through. Had the four little rooms in it that we. I thought was probably for communication or electrical purposes. Uh, let's see what else. I have looked on this side over here to see if there's any open edits or any places that we can poke our heads into. Uh, there was one opening up here uh, that I went ahead and did a little bit of scouting on before I started videoing. I did not want to take you up there 
and have it be like a, uh, you, you know, build your suspense up like Geraldo did with the bank safe and actually get into it and find out it's a big nothing. Well, that's what this was. This was Geraldo's safe. So I got all the way up there and uh, went into this open, it looked like an attic to me. Uh, it, it, it had been it had been drilled, uh, but it went back probably about 15 feet and stopped. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm glad I didn't make a big deal out of this thing. So, um, there are a, a number of sectioned off areas up here uh, where the ground is caving in. Uh, there is nothing as substantial as what we saw earlier, where the pit just kept on going. So here is a great example of like tailings. This has all been pulled out of the earth right here. And we were standing on top of that earlier. So right on top of that is where that train car was at, uh, the, the tanker. Um, but that right there was all one time inside the, inside the earth that's been extracted out. Uh, they've deemed it as being debris, as waste. Uh, and they gotta get rid of it. In most cases, it doesn't, uh, it's cost prohibitive to throw it in trucks and get it out of here. So they, you know, why would you do that? Why would you take garbage like rock debris that is, has no uh, uh, financial or you know, no, no value, no, no monetary value at all? You know, why would you just take rock debris and, and, and spend money to transport it out of here? Just throw it off to the side. And that's exactly what that is. Okay, uh, still bear with me. I can see the head frame right now where we're going to. Um, you can't because I'm not showing it to you, but even if I was showing it to you, you still couldn't see it because it blends into the background. Um, I just happen to know where it's at. On both sides of this road here, uh, there is rusting out corroding debris, like these old uh, drums. Again, there's a spot right there that they have fenced off. I've already looked in there. Uh, it's just ground that is sinking in. That's all that is right now. Uh, in five or 10 years, it could be a full-fledged thousand foot deep pit, who knows. Uh, and when that, thing, when that thing gives out, um, you, know, you don't want me standing on top of that area, which is why I have it fenced off right now. But yeah, this is the road that, uh, that we're coming in on here uh, that we'll be leaving on also. It's a uh, it's an all right road. It's got some pretty hardcore spots that, if you zone out like I do every once in a while while I'm driving, you'll hit. It's like hitting a pothole. You could be on a perfect road back in the city, hit that pothole, and your entire world turns upside down. You're like, what the hell just happened? Well, that happened to me a couple of times yesterday on this road where I kind of zoned out. Maybe I was looking at a map, uh, eating something. Anyway, I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing, which is focused on driving. Uh, but my hands also weren't at the, uh, the hell is it, the 10 and, 10 and 2. So, I don't know. It's just the way that it's who I am, I guess. Uh, so you do have to pay attention uh, while you're driving roads like this. Plus, with so much old mining equipment and stuff laying around, the last thing you want to do is run over a rusted out can. Uh, or if you can help it get involved in an area where there's a bunch of freaking old rusty out nails or broken glass. Uh, that is one of the biggest cons of coming out to places like this is that uh, sites are usually peppered with stuff like that. So you gotta be real careful you don't pick up something like that in your, in your, in your tire. Uh, like I said, cause it could make for a bad, well, it could make for a long day. Let's put it that way. By the time you get everything changed out. Uh, so as we continue down this road here, again, you got your, uh, every site needs to have a 55 gallon drum laying around. Uh, every site also needs to have an old vehicle that's been shot up. I have not seen one of those out here yet. Not saying it's not here. I'm just saying I haven't seen it if it is here. Again, you can see how well, how well visited this place is. I am still the only one here. So since I got here yesterday, afternoon to right now which is probably I don't know what time it is 10 9 30 somewhere in that area in the morning 
uh, nobody. So this is one of the better mine sites I've been to by far. Something like this here, it would be real beneficial to get like a historical map to find out exactly where the openings were at, where the shafts were at, how far underground they went, where they were at underground, what the buildings were that you're looking at that are now destroyed. Um, a site like this here, that would be freaking, sorry about the wind. Uh, actually, the wind right now is fairly calm compared to what it's been the last couple of days. So yesterday I was at a site uh, called the May Lundy Mine. And that was a really cool site uh, over by Canyon Lake and that area, kind of, kind of by Bridgeport. Uh, actually on the east side of Yosemite is where it was at. And uh, you basically had to hike three and a half miles just to get to the mine. You couldn't drive up there. It's, uh, there was just a hiking trail. Uh, so you had to hike in three and a half miles. They had the, uh, uh, the mine site there. And it wasn't nearly as well preserved as this one was. It wasn't nearly as extensive as this one was. Um, but it was cool because uh, you had to hike in, which right there, that's a gatekeeper for a lot of people. They're like, nah, that doesn't sound, I, I don't like to hike and my shirt's all ain't gonna hike three and a half miles to go see a mine site. So that keeps a lot of people out of there. So, uh, but it was a cool site. I wanted to get that captured on, on camera, but because of the horror, I mean, the winds were horrible up there. It, it, it would have been, it, it would have been a mess. So I just took a couple of still pictures up there and I called it a day. But it was cool because right next to that was uh, another, there was a, an alpine lake, because you're, you're up in the mountains, and uh, that lake was called the Oneida Lake. So once you once you get to the mine site, yeah, 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 you scouted around, you snooped around a little bit, you saw what you needed to see, and then you hiked for about another eighth of a mile, and you got to Oneida Lake, and that was freaking peaceful as all hell. I mean, I always, once I hit one of those alpine lakes, I put my hand in there, just as a, uh, I don't know, no one else knows about in there or not. I mean, you take my word for it, I guess. But for me, I think it's just cool to dip your hand in there and say, yep, I did it. I made it here. And now it's time to turn around. So that's what I did. Okay, cool. So as we approach where, we're, where I'm taking you, that's a head frame right there. And right below that is going to be the open shaft. And I see what looks to be an adit of some sort. Looking up here, you see the, the tailings that was pulled out of the earth, and you see right behind it what looks to be, I'll call it a cave in, in layman's terms. Uh, could be something, could not be something. When I was talking about looking around over on this side, that's exactly what I saw. It was a cave, it was, it was an opening like that. I went up there. And it was about 10 or 15 feet deep, and that was it. In fact, I think we've already passed that. But, um, am I going to go up there? No, I'm not going to go up there. So, like I said, I, uh, from here, I am going to, I've got on my map to hit the Silver Dyke Mine and then the Queen Mine after that. Uh, the Silver Dyke mine has recently been sold, like within the last couple of years. And the word now is that the owner has like, you know, stay out, no trespassing, uh, all this stuff. So if I get down there and I see that, I'll, uh, I'll honor that. Um, so I may or may not be doing the Silver Dyke mine. Supposedly that's a substantial, it's a, mine, it's a mining site like this here that has all kinds of stuff laying around. All kinds of open edits, all kinds of openings. right there I looked in there yesterday and um, it's collapsed so there's nothing going on there now uh, so that's a silver dike mine uh, so if I can get in there I will and in that case I'd probably stay there I, I would stay there overnight because by the time I get down there it's gonna be later in the day uh, here is this and again you can see let me get from behind this tree you can see all the rock that has been pulled out of there. So this is, this head frame 
is the first thing that you see when you come into the city, which is coming up this trail right here. So, given that that's the first thing you see, you know you're in for uh, something cool the rest of the way. So, I, I stopped here yesterday briefly on the way up just to scope this out real quick so it piqued my curiosity. And uh, yeah, this is this is cool. This head frame right here is very well preserved. To my knowledge, it has not been rebuilt within any time since when this was in operations. Uh, it is weathered, of course. But you can see, you still see some of the cabling, some of the support structure that was used to pull. Here's where the ground is starting to cave in. See where the ground is starting to give out here. Sign that there could be an open shaft below that. Uh, all right, let me just walk up here real quick. And there's no reason to climb this right here. But you can see some of the the cabling and the structure that was used to get to remove uh, from the ground what it was that they're pulling up out of here. So let me you can see the little chute right there with a that rope is original or not but you can see the chute there that uh, was used to um, uh, dispose of uh, as they pulled the uh, uh, the buckets the bins up from down below it hit that chute and come down and uh, eventually they would load it onto a vehicle of some sort whether that was a, another cart or a truck whatever and uh, and remove it from this area here so but this is a head frame right here, and a very well-preserved one at that. No control levers. Like I said, in, in most mine sites you see, you don't see one like this that is still standing the way this one is. It might be half of one, it might be partially burned, but it, uh, it's nowhere near as well preserved as this one is here. Of course, this is all cordoned off with barbed wire. With barbed wire. Uh, and as you look down, you are looking down for a ways. Well, here's the ladder to get down there. And I think what I'm going to do is I will climb down this ladder and uh, get down to that first get down to that first area down there and see what's going on after that. So give me a second here to kind of get things situated. This is also a, uh, a three compartment shaft. Uh, and I have no idea how far down there, but this is the, the second major mine that's out here. Uh, the first one, of course, being Simon. I don't know what the name of this one was. Maybe Little Simon, I have no idea. You can see where there was a uh, trap door of some sort that uh, covered this area. Like I said, the last thing you wanna do is make a, make a wrong step, because down you go. Let me just see here how long it takes for this rock noise to report back. I'm gonna drop this rock down there. Yeah, that goes down for a ways. That goes down for a long ways. Hang on. Let's take a look at that first landing down there and see what's going on.
you see the electrical cables that here's one compartment, two compartments. And I am writing on the third compartment. Like I said, we're going to go down the first landing and probably call it quits. This ladder is actually structurally in pretty good shape. But you can smell again, you can smell the rats down here, which there are rat droppings everywhere. So, okay, as we approach that first landing, we went down again. Here's a ladder. We will not, uh, I'm not going any further than this. Uh, this goes forever. I mean, you can see this just keeps freaking going. And this one very well could go down a thousand feet also. I don't know, but you can see. The uh, the piping that was used for either water and or, well, not and or, but either water or air. Uh, you can see the beams that were used to transport the carts from the bottom. And then they would go up, they were hoisted up. Let me pull my light, man, I do not want to drop my phone. Let me pull my light out here real quick. Yeah, that's not going to do us any, any good. But you can see where you can see where um, these ladders they just keep going down. So here's the next ladder down right here, and then there's one at the next level, and then I can see this here one, two, and I can see another one beyond that. So this shaft just keeps on going down. And eventually what you're probably going to have is somewhere along the way is you're going to have a horizontal shaft. Here's looking up. Here's you'll have a horizontal, you'll have horizontal shafts that go off in each direction. So there's a six right there. So I don't know if that's means level six, but I don't know if that's six stories, 60 feet. It's a hell of a lot further than 600 feet. It's a hell of a lot further than 60 feet. That much I can tell you right now. Um, so I don't know at what point you start having your, your horizontal shafts. Here's the electrical work right here. You can see the wires running back up to the top from the bottom from where we're, where we're down below. Um, but you had... Uh, Eventually, you're going to have shafts that run off in each direction. Uh, and I don't know at what point that starts happening. So I'm giving you guys the view into the depths of hell here as I climb back up this thing. So, like I said, this, this ladder is in pretty good shape. So... second here with the camera work while I get myself figured out oh uh, but that's that's kind of what I wanted to show you and probably the coolest thing and I know you're looking at rocks right now while I talk but just bear with me um, probably the coolest thing I wanted to show you is coming right up here and then we're gonna end this video in right about two hours okay so remember I told you that all kinds of metal cans and stuff from that were used to get for food, canned meats and stuff like that. Sardines is well known to be something that these guys ate a lot of. They were cheap, they were easily uh, sourced, uh, they, last, they lasted a lo very long time and uh, very nutritious for you. So you see a lot of sardine cans in these piles of garbage that are laying around. 
I did not expect to see this though. So looking around, I think that stuff like this here, we saw, hang on, my mind is going a different direction right now. Uh, we saw a vessel like this back in, back where the other Simon mine was at. And obviously this was used to produce fire, uh, heat, what have you. I just wonder if they didn't have on-premises, uh, what the hell they call those guys? Uh, not metal workers, but, um, oh, I'll think of it. Uh, what the hell they call the guys that, I'll just say metal workers. It's, uh, that's not the term I'm looking for. It escapes me what I'm trying to say. But, um, it's not a fabricator. Uh, almost like a, uh, a metal working area. Uh, Smith? Smith. What the hell's the one? Anyway, I'll, give me a second. I want to show you something real quick. Um, so getting back over here, I did not expect to see this here. And looking at this head frame again, and look at the base... And you see, was an original can of sardines. Just sitting right here. So, now somebody probably put this up here. But this right here is a sardine can. That somebody who worked this mine, you can see where they rolled, started, they rolled the top of it off, the lid. They ate, and then they just discarded the, uh, the metal container. I thought that right there was probably one of the coolest things I've seen out here. So this right here is the Simon Mining District. A quick walkthrough, even though that walkthrough was two hours long. Um, we covered a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of the history, a lot of the, uh, the equipment, metal worker. Metal worker is kind of what I wanted to say. Um, I just wonder if that's not what these, um, obviously it was used to heat stuff up for heat, for, for fire, for heat. Um, and we saw, we saw a, uh, I wouldn't call it an oven, but we saw a uh, contraption like that, a fire pit like that, a heat pit like that, uh, over at the Simon mine also, over at the, the main mine site. Um, we've seen a lot of stuff out here, uh, and even like a lot of old, old pieces of things like this here. Um, this site is, uh, you know, the weathering and the natural, uh, disassembly of things, uh, put all that stuff aside. This stuff here is fairly well, this site is very well preserved. Uh, yeah, you've got your buildings that fell down. Um, whereas in a lot of sites, kind of like the uh, Shea Mong site, where a lot of those buildings were shot up, you can see the bullet holes, you can see the spent shell casings all over. You don't see that out here. Uh, you don't see a lot of broken glass. You don't see a lot of shell casings. You don't see a lot of shotgun shells. Uh, you don't see a lot of shot up stuff uh, out here. Uh, I, I, I just think that uh, places like this here, uh, you really got to want to get out here. And that is basically left up to the people that have other interests in coming out here than just target practice. Uh, I do not have a problem with people that do target practice as long as you pick up your crap when you're done. Uh, Lord knows I love my firearms, but uh, I also would not come out here shoot up a bunch of stuff and leave my freaking brass laying everywhere like uh like you see in so many sites that this is not one of those sites so there is a uh a lot of history out here uh the mine was operational for a very long time and uh like i said if you want open mine if you want open mine shafts pits all that stuff to explore i've done a lot of that already on camera and off and uh this side out here gives you all of that. Again, this is the Simon Mining District. 
you come out here, be careful, but take a look at the two main mine sites, the one that we just saw with the head frame, and then the, the actual Simon mine itself, the big one. And then uh, explore if that's, a, if that's what you want to do. Uh, like I said, from here, I'm going to look into the, uh, the Silver Dyke mine, which is about, uh, I don't know, it's a haul down the road. Uh, the main thing is, is hell, there's a haul just to get off this road here. A couple miles long just to get back to the main trail, which is still a remote trail. But, uh, so the uh, Silver Deck Mine and or the Queen Mine, uh, eventually we're closing in on the, we are just, like I said, southeast of Hawthorne, northeast of Bishop, in the state of Utah, and uh, within the, the end of this week, mid next week, we'll be in Bishop, which there could be some interesting filming coming out of there too, given the, uh, the nature of that beast. So that said, there's one more quick look around at the Sierra Nevada mountain range, the head frame we just came out of. Good timing because I just got a, a low battery notice too. And uh, so that brings to a close this video. Uh, I told you it would be long, uh, but there's a lot going on out here and I didn't want to shortchange you. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, let me know. Uh, I always respond. So good enough. You guys have a good day. We'll talk to you all. Uh, we'll talk to you all in the next video.